Daytime television is quite unique, isn't it? An eight-hour chunk of the schedule that is dedicated to keeping the unemployed, the retired and the parents of the very young entertained. It is the home of angry opinions via Jeremy Vine and the Harridans of Loose Virtue. The home of micro-budgeted dramas, both British and Antipodean. The home of wheeler dealer men forged from teak hawking old tat to other flamboyant old boys with unique hair and condiment coloured trousers. And it's all completely disposable rubbish. But homely rubbish. It is as essential to any stricken whelp as a duvet on the settee, a cup of soup and a Lucasade. Without daytime TV, it's possible that sick people may never recover and return to work. It is that important. No doubt the highlight of this tawdry entertainment is unquestionably the quiz show. From chain letters to going for gold, from countdown to blockbusters, from the weakest link to pointless, all the way through to stuff like Tipping Point and The Chase that is shown on television today. The quiz show is the king of daytime entertainment. With their shiny black floors, their distinctly illuminated sets, their genial known quantity host and their low monetary prize combined with, and this is important, a cut and paste production value that doesn't require much work, these shows are nothing less than completely riveting. But there were some shows that couldn't really be described as quiz shows, even though they followed much the same format as I've just described. Two of them that I'm thinking of right now both had games on the Nintendo DS, Deal or No Deal, and the game we're going to cover today, Golden Balls. The reason you can't describe Golden Balls or Deal or No Deal as quiz shows is because, well, there's no quiz. They don't feature any questions. All the other elements are present, but no one has put any questions in Jasper Carrot's hands. Must have forgotten silly people. Golden Balls was an ITV series that ran from June 2007 to December 2009 over the course of six series and 288 episodes. And it did very well initially, winning the 5pm ratings battle against its television competition, including the then institution of Anne Robinson's The Weakest Link. Despite its cheap format and relative success on UK screens, it wasn't one, surprisingly, that translated across the world like The Weakest Link or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, as there's only one other version that I could find, and that was in Argentina. As previously mentioned, it was presented by brummy funny man Jasper Carrot. Jasper had been a regular feature on television throughout the 1980s and 1990s with shows like Carrot's Commercial Breakdown, Canned Carrot, Carrot Confidential, as well as sitcoms like The Detectives and The Daily Express Baiting All About Me. Jasper is very comfortable in his role of host, always friendly and calm in tense situations where contestants are staring daggers so sharply into each other that they'd be well advised to have a medical team on standby to cope with the puncture wounds. But why would this animosity exist? Well, in place of questions, the game is about trust and deception. Four players are dealt shiny spheres worth different amounts of money, which range from £10 all the way up to £75,000. Also in the mix are balls marked with one chilling word. Killer. Oh. Of the four balls each player is given, two are shown to all present, whereas the other two are hidden away with only the contestant able to view them. The idea is that the players must eliminate the participants they believe have killers and low-value money, thus keeping the big money in the game, with a vote occurring to nominate the patsy who will be leaving the show with their terrible balls. Each of the contestants will be given the opportunity to state what's on their hidden balls, and those who have balls as poor as the quality of Lance Armstrong's discarded testicle will try and chin spin and confuzzle their contemporaries to save their rotten hides. Those who are eliminated take their balls with them, probably not home, though if I was on the show I'd pocket it. My honesty is a reason why I wouldn't be a very good contestant on Golden Balls, but my thievery is why I shouldn't be allowed in society at all. 
I'm a complex individual. So it's entirely possible that a scumbag has deceived their way through the round with two or three killer balls. Then they get kept in the game along with their probably low tier money. All the balls still active get put back in that posh looking Goliath of a lottery machine with more balls added, some killer, some money based. Once we're down to two people, the remaining players go to a random game of chance where they choose which balls to keep and which balls to bin. Once these are whittled down to five balls, any killer balls that are unveiled will divide the total by 10. So if you have £10,000 in winnings, that is reduced down to 1000 Another would reduce that amount down to 100 Another would reduce the amount down to £10. Killer indeed. Then comes the big moment of tension. This is what it's all been building up to. Of whatever's left, that is the final cash prize. Jasper hands each player two more balls, split and steal. If both players pick split, then the prize is split and shared. But if one player chooses steal, then that player takes home the total amount, the entire pot. That would then leave the remaining player with nothing but betrayal and hate in their heart. In the show, it's easy to see why it's so compulsive to view. It's the magic of human psychology, of joy, of disappointment, of truth versus honesty. Watch this. Stephen, I just hope they weren't puppy dog tears and they were real oh. tears and you were genuinely going to say I could... I mean, everyone who knew me would just be disgusted if I stopped. I am going to split. I swear down to you. Steve, choose either the split or the steel ball now. We're going on with 50 grand each. I promise you that. Split or steel? <laughs> Congratulations. Sarah, you have just won one. Stephen, I'm so sorry. Commiserations, you've lost. <laughs> what a bitch. Gripping television, I'm sure you'll agree, especially for something pre-evening news. Very entertaining. The stakes are high. The humanity is either going to warm your heart or callous your soul. So, as you've seen from the gameplay I've been showing, all of these rounds are present in Golden Balls the video game. Good. Developers, Slam Productions, who are also known for working on a few similar era Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and Family Fortunes games, well, they sure have completed their little tick list given to them by publishers Mindscape in terms of things to include. Yep, yep, that's in there. It's all in there. And they've presented them using creepy models of Jasper, who voices his character, and the contestants who are all given career-based looks and appear to have brought their work uniform with them to the television show. It's a strange-looking aesthetic choice, but it's no different from the buzz games on PlayStation 2 or 3, is it, really? You do get footage of the machine working and of the set, but boy, is it presented in incredibly grainy, compressed footage. It looks terrible, to be honest, and fares obviously a bit better on the Wii, which is the exact same game as this. But for all these aesthetic choices, they are what they are, and they're not really a massive issue when you compare it to the real problem about the Golden Balls video game. You see, this game functions in exactly the way it's supposed to. The issue is, there's nothing more to it than that. There are no extra options, no extra mini games. There is a multiplayer mode for two players, but that doesn't address a rather glaring issue about this game. There is no game at all. That clip from the show, that shows why the television show was so compulsive. It shows why it was popular for a, a couple of years there. The entertainment, you see, came from the people. How convincing they were, how manipulative they were. In Golden Balls, the video game, you get four options when the lie comes up. You know, the actual gameplay part of the game. You get truth and three bluff options. But you don't even get to choose or vet what you say. You just pick one of the lies and the game goes on. Then you get a sort of short response from the other three. And these 
are completely random. Sometimes they don't even correspond with the balls that the character has in front of them. They start apologising for having a really good hand. So maybe that my argument that the functionality of the game was okay, maybe that's not true either. But yeah, the main issue of the game is that as a concept, with no adding of any quiz element or a separate section of the game that does something a bit jazzy with the format, you know, like ask quiz questions or has some sort of puzzle element to it or something that involves rolling the balls in a particular way, you're left with the most shallow, artless husk of coding I've ever seen described as a video game. It's the worst thing that I think I've ever seen committed to a DS cartridge. And I've covered the How to Stop Smoking cartridge and the Russell Grant game. Golden Balls the video game is as thin as a 2010 era Tesco carrier bag or the wing of a dragonfly. It is as pointless as a lump of blue tech, a fallen trifle, or Alexander Armstrong asking you to name African countries. Always go for Central African Republic. Golden Balls, the video game, is utterly bereft of anything. You'd have more fun playing the DS without a cartridge. And if you play this instead of watching daytime television, you run the danger of making yourself sick for more days and you'd have to call in to work and say, I can't come in, I've got a case of just having played the Golden Balls video game-itis. Sorry. Is it a contender for the worst video game of all time? I think it might be. As without the stakes, or the money, or the psychology, you're just choosing and opening spheres using your stylus. Golden Balls, more like mouldy bollocks. And with May coming up, shall we look at Star Wars The Clone Wars? It's rhetorical, we are. Like, subscribe, don't play Golden Balls. And K thanks bye.